Hi, everyone. Welcome to your Southern California Home Advocate Report with your local home advocate, Dr. Terrell Miller. How are you today, Dr. Miller? I am very good. I just got Fant my nails done. I mean, fantastic. <laughs> That's fantastic news. <laughs> I know. Uh, today, we are talking about missed payments and what that really means. So for many of you, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. We're talking about it again. Uh, if you missed a payment, we kind of covered the steps previously and that content's out there. What I think the bigger thing is, is discussing the psychological mindset. You've met with homeowners that have missed payment. And to me, the most interesting thing is the level of denial and action. Yeah. How is it meeting people directly? How do you overcome this? How do you reassure them your feelings? Well, I always, my, my strategy is always to, to create a situation that puts the, the homeowner, the, the missed payment homeowner or anybody for that matter, back in the driver's seat. And, and with, with the information that we have to, to share with them, to say, right, you may have understood this is what happens when you make miss a payment because someone has told you that, but this is, this is where the law is, or this is what is actually happening. This is what's been reported to me. Um, and so it's, it's, it's getting rid of all the misinformation or the hopeful information. I don't, you know, maybe saying misinformation. I think that's a correct is, term. Hopeful information sounds very correct. Yeah. And, and because, because we all want everything to work out perfectly for us. And, and for some people, I guess it does, but for most of us, it doesn't. We have zigs and zags and uh, the promises of, with the forbearance of, you don't have to make your payment, isn't that great? Um, I always fall into that. As soon as it follows up with, isn't that great? It's a red flag because there's something else going on. And you know maybe you're not paying attention or maybe the print was too small or you're just relieved. I, I don't have to make the payment, so now I can buy food, and you know that sort of thing. And so, it, but there's there's always going to be the price to pay somewhere, somehow. Uh, that old saying, "There's no such thing as a free lunch." Um, pretty, it's pretty accurate. You know, it's just somewhere you have to pay. Well, I think it goes back to the myth of 2007 when people didn't make their payments or strategically defaulted and were theoretically saving their money so that they can move. We've now gone through an entire pandemic. We've been given money, literally by the government, to stay in our houses and stay blissfully drunk for a year. And here we are on the other side of it. And those people don't have that money. They didn't save up those payments. We're in that same situation again. Uh, but now the difference is there's so much equity in these homes. And they're allowing the opportunity of the bank to get completely whole. And I, I said this in 2007, the only reason they're making short sale deals is because there's no equity. There's no money in the transaction. They're just losing and cutting their losses. Now it makes sense for a bank to foreclose and get every single dime that they're owed, including late fees. And in crazier situations, homeowners not even collecting their equity after foreclosure. Banks are more than happy to let that sit inside of a bank for themselves. Um, what would you say to people that are just sort of taking this, nothing bad ever happens to me? Well, I would, I would just kind of go over, you know, just what you said is that if, if they are in a situation where they have not made payments and they do have a boatload of equity, which most people do at this point, that, you know, why not take the positive action now get behind the, the steering wheel and drive so that they know that they're going to get their equity from the sale versus having the banks foreclose because as you said they're going to get whole plus and then they're happy to hang on to the equity because most homeowners don't understand that belongs to them as long as all the bills have been paid anything left over belongs to them and of course there's a whole industry kind of after the fact for people to find that equity and take a piece of it to give it back to the previous homeowner, the ones that sold their house. And it seems silly to do that when they could actually drive the train right now. And, but I, but I also know that it's like, well, but what, where, where will I go? What will I do? And it's like, 
there's options out there. And it's, it's, it's just, you know, looking at everybody's individual situation and saying, here's, here's a couple of things that you could do. And it's not always the same. It's not going to be the same for everybody. Not everybody has family that they could move in with. Not everybody has family that they want to move in with, sure. quite frankly. And, and so, and, and there may be some other adjustments that need to be made, but it ultimately in the bigger picture, which of course, real estate has always been, not always, but for most of us, it's a, it's a longer term picture, not, you know, a three day picture or a 30 day picture. And, um, and then, and then find ways to go into a holding pattern and, 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 and can retain that equity rather than just let the bank hold on to it and then hope you get it back someday when the state notifies you that they have some money up at the state level. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so first thing, click the link down below. That'll show you the nine alternatives to foreclosure. You can fill out uh, if you'd like uh, Dr. Miller or myself to give you a call. We're happy to do it and explain to you your alternatives. All the information's down below, 833-969-4673. Direct number for Dr. Miller is down below as well. Is there anything you'd like to tell anybody who's missed a payment? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab the, the, what you said last week. Talk to the doc. Talk to the doc. I like it. <laughs> I know uh, I do. I, I, it's perfect. Take action. Uh, I can't stress it enough as a former banker, as somebody who's worked with somebody as great as Terrell, take action, talk to us. Don't call your cousin, Larry. Don't get blown away. Agents will approach you with letters and initials on their cards. This is something we've been doing for 14 years. We're the okay. oldest and largest company doing this out there. Nobody has a former banker consulting or working for them or doing this for anybody. Uh, and the bank's not your friend in this transaction. I don't want to be the one to inform you, but they're not. So please get the advice and help. Anything you'd like to add? And that's it for today.